It's good to see the gavel still works. Let the record reflect. We have all re reconvened with all members present. Please rise for the Pledge of Allegiance. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. All right, a little business, and we'll get to the greetings and a couple of uh, special ceremonies. We have a motion for the executive minutes of August 10th, 2015. So moved. Second. Roll call vote, please. Mr. Catalanello? Yes. Mr. Landrigan? Yes. Mrs. Vitale? Yes. Ms. Bailey? Yes. Mr. Wolkowitz? Yes. Mr. Rowe? Yes. All right, and a motion for the regular minutes of August 10th, 2015. So moved. Second. Any council discussion? Seeing none, roll call vote. Mr. Catalanello? Yes. Mr. Landrigan? Yes. Mrs. Vitale? Yes. Ms. Bailey? Yes. Mr. Wolkowitz? Yes. Mr. Rowe? Yes. Welcome, everyone. It's nice to uh, see that uh, we have a great turnout after a uh, long break. We didn't have a second meeting in August, and we have a late meeting this month. Thankfully, being mayor is like riding a bicycle. You, you never lose it, so I'm uh, ready to go here. A um, couple of announcements. Uh, library, the Madison Library is experiencing multiple construction projects this fall. During October and November, the library's heating, ventilating, and air conditioning system will be replaced. As a part of the project, the main lobby and rear staff area will be renovated. The uh, project is funded with capital funds approved by the Borough Council along with other capital uh, projects supported by ca library capital funds. So they're doing a couple of their own projects. The project, the project will affect the library's public service hours, and they apologize in advance for all the, any inconvenience. But remember, your, uh, use your main card, and you can uh, get books elsewhere. But uh, check the website for hours during the month of October and uh, into November, so you know exactly when the hours are. And during the uh, construction time, the staff parking lot will be uh, closed off and rear entrances will not be accessible. And they anticipate that the Chase Auditorium will be closed the entire month of November, because it's a little more expensive work there. Uh, despite construction, some of their uh, regular programs are ongoing, such as App Party on Tuesday, September 29th at 7 p.m. And the evening book group, 7 p.m. on Monday, September 21st, as well as story times and other programs for children are scheduled throughout the week. In a little bit, we're going to be uh, recognizing some uh, success on the field, but I uh, also want to uh, note some more recent success. They often say uh, records and streaks are made to be broken, and um, there was a streak of 24 winning games this past Saturday that was broken. Mountain Lakes came took on Madison, came into Madison, and 33-6, um, to six, Madison convincingly ended their 24-game winning streak, so congratulations to uh, Madison Dodgers football team, a great start to their uh, season. Uh, this past Saturday, Bob Landrigan and I headed off to Union Beach, to uh, Union Beach Day, the first kind of town-wide celebration they've had since uh, Sandy, as uh, Bob and I saw, they have come a long ways in that time, Regretfully, they have a long ways to come. The uh, parts of town that was most affected, there is basically no one living there right now and still some houses that need to be torn down. We saw some towns, uh, homes that have been raised up. The beachfront has been restored and uh, it was great to see the community spirit um, that was going on or, or, or during uh, Union Beach Day. And if you really, if you're having a bad day and you want to get a boost, Go to Union Beach and just say you're from Madison, New Jersey, and the reception you will get will be incredible. So three years later, they still truly appreciate the work we have done, whether it was giving uh, police cars, sending um, Russ Brown, in fact, their OEM coordinator was at a convention recently and had to track down Russ Brown again to thank him for all the work he did, the volunteers that went down there. This summer, we sent 39 campers through donations from um, Quest, 
foundation and local uh, residents. So we are still helping Union Beach get, get their lives back together again. Employees of the month, and um, this is the opposite of, um, I've just lost the name, so I'll, I'll drop that thought. It wasn't gonna work anyway. <laughs> <laughs> Employees of the month are, are very common because they, these three keep stepping forward. Stacy Dooley, Sandra Emmerich, and Le Linda Sawyer for their commitment and dedication working together to cover a vacancy in the finance and administration. And uh, let me uh, come down for a couple of presentations here. There we go. Trivia question, no prizes. Uh, who in this room has attended more council meetings in the last 12 years? Do, do, do. First, it's not me. It's no one at this table. It is Sally Capone. Uh, Sally, please step forward. <laughs> So Sally, you may not recognize because she's normally in the front row, taking notes diligently, as she has been the reporter for the Madison Eagle for the last 12 years and has attended almost all those council meetings, all of them. So that's, that is an impressive record. And sitting right there in the front row, making sure Madison is informed about what is going on here. And I just want to share a few comments uh, that uh, a little email exchange that I had. I'll, I'm going to put Sally on the spot and quote her here. This is what uh, Sally sent out when she reached out to the council to, to announce her retirement. For anyone who talks about the heartland of America and patriotism, they should come to Madison. There have been many occasions where the outpouring of community spirit has been overwhelming. I have no other reason to say that this is true. Uh, other than th th it is true, Madison will always hold a special place in my heart, especially the magnificent Hartley Dodge Memorial, which I will visit from time to time. So we're, we're, we'll hold you to that. And my email back was certainly, I've, I've been here for 10 years, and it's been constant to see Sally in that front row taking notes. And it's been a pleasure to always work with her, and it won't be the same without you. And as mayor, I can, you know, sometimes I'll get that phone call Tuesday morning, I'll pick it up, thanks to caller ID, and say, hello, Sally, what, what do we need uh, clarified? And we'll uh, get the word straight as we get it out there. And as she talked about the overwhelming community spirit we have in Madison, that does reflect the elected officials we have up here. It reflects the employees of the borough. It reflects all the residents we have. It reflects the Little League players we have in here. But one of the things we have learned in this 24-hour media world, that sometimes the word doesn't get out the right way. We have to count on people like Sally Capone to make sure everyone knows that Madison is a special town, and you have done that so well. So on behalf of the borough of Madison, we wish you the best of luck, and as Lisa Ellis said, best of luck as you write your next chapter in your life. Have Okay, of roses for you. <laughs> John Hoover, come on up. Here's a face that should be fairly familiar for those whether it's Rotary, Farmer's Market, or so many different things in uh, Madison. This is John Hoover. We have a special proclamation. But 
Here's another little trivia question. For those that know John Hoover, we, we know what his license plate is. Mm -hmm. Big John, and you may think that it has to do with his stature. You know, I'm, I'm not a small guy. But Big John ref refers to his heart because he is such a giving person. And he has announced that he is heading off to Florida sometime soon. We all here are hoping later, but we know you're heading off. So on behalf, let me read this, uh, of Borough of Madison, read this proclamation. Whereas John Hoover, a very community-minded individual, a longtime resident of the Borough of Madison, and whereas as active member of the Rotary Club of Madison, John supports the organization's mission in many ways and truly lives up to its motto of service above self. And whereas a member of the Board of Health from 2008 until 2013, Job John served as a board president from 2012 to January 2013, and whereas for two years, John also served on the Property Maintenance Emergency Committee, and whereas in October 2014, he was appointed to the Senior Advisory Com Committee. I know he doesn't look old enough to serve that role. Whereas John was sworn in as commissioner to the Downtown Development Commission in November 2014, became a secretary in January 2015, and served as liaison to the Senior Advisory Committee. And whereas, tremendous asset to the Downtown Development Commission, John was an active volunteer in all volunteer opportunities, especially on May Day and Bottle Hill Day, and was a fixture at the farmer's market. And whereas, with his keen intelligence and no-nonsense style, he sets a very high bar for all others and will be deeply missed. Now, therefore, I, Robert H. Conley, the mayor of the borough of Madison, on behalf of the governing body, commend John Hoover for his dedication and service to the borough of Madison and extend best wishes to him in all future endeavors. John, thank you so much. It's hard to know at a time like this what to say, but I am very, very humbled by the honor. I am very grateful for working with all of you and all of the town for all of the things that we've done. I see some very active faces in here that will far surpass me when they leave and will get a proclamation this long. But I want to thank you. It's been, it's been wonderful. I will miss Madison and everybody in it. Uh, and I wish you all the best of luck. Keep going the way you're going. Thank you. Three years ago, a tradition was reestablished by the Little Leagues of Madison and Chatham, and that was the annual Mayor's Cup. And so three years ago, I went to witness the reestablishment, and I witnessed uh, Mad uh, Chatham leaving with, uh, at that time, I think it was just two games, and uh, so they got to keep two trophies that year. I think last year there might have been a split, but this year, the results were far different, weren't they? But what really hit me, besides the excellent play and the fact that the three teams won, but the level of sportsmanship sh shown at the end of the game and the excitement of having won the mayor's trophy. It looked like they had just won the Little League World Series as they were jumping up and down in the middle of the field. So if there happens to be any Little Leaguers in this audience, please come forward. Come on up. And the coaches, come on up too. Ken, you want to come up also? So we have representatives from three teams. Kind of squeeze up here, everyone. All right, the junior division, O'Donnell Landscaping, managed by Bo Brownlee. And we got that trophy. Let me come around here, Bo. Come on down. Congratulations. Here we go. And this will be proudly displayed here in Borough Hall. Well done. Uh, let's see the... Uh, where we, got, where we have our uh, O'Donnell landscaping crew, are you in the back there? They're all studying, okay. All right, they've seen it, yep. You know, 
no, re no rest for the weary. Just because you win a championship doesn't mean homework stops. All right, the majors team, which I see right here in the front, the Kiwanis, represented by Coach Tom Hagerstrom. All right, thank you. Congratulations. And on to the next page. Triple A division. Let me let, let them kind of squeeze around the front here. Represented by RSR Sports Management, managed by Brian McGuire. Congratulations on your Mayor's Cup trophy. All right. Let's get a turn and this is how you practice to be mayor. <laughs> All right. All right. We got every. Let's get a good shot of. Uh, we'll get. Let everyone get a good shot of everyone. Yeah. All right. Again, not only congratulations on winning and playing so well in the field but representing Madison so well in your attitude and sportsmanship. Congratulations. Now. <laughs> and now it's time to go home and do your homework. <laughs> oh, we don't have it? Okay. All right. Congratulations, guys. Well done. Ken, thank you. And this is uh, Ken Ware, the president of the Madison Little League. Thank you for your, your volunteers and leadership. I'd like to add that we're up 14 to 3 on Madison. All right. We have a little transition and we have a uh, resolution to pass in just a second. There you are. I got to work on my peripheral, peripheral vision here. <laughs> All right, may I have a, a motion for resolution 249-215, resolution of the Borough of Madison appointing Adam Michael Riley to the position of Class two special officer in the Madison Police Department. Uh, Mayor, I move resolution 249-2015. Do I, we gotta have a second. Roll call vote, please. Mr. Catalano? Yes. Mr. Landrigan? Yes. Mrs. Vitale? Yes. Ms. Bailey? Yes. Mr. Wolkowitz? Yes. Mr. Rowe? Yes. Special officer, Riley, please step forward. <clears throat> Someone to raise, raise your right hand and repeat after me. I state your name. I, Adam Riley. Do solemnly swear. Do solemnly swear. That I'll faithfully. That I'll faithfully. Impartially. Impartially. And justly. And justly. Perform all the duties of. Perform all the duties of. Class two special officer. Class two special officer. According to the best of my ability. According to the best of my ability. I further solemnly swear. I further solemnly swear. That I will support the Constitution of the United States. That I will support the Constitution of the United States. And the Constitution of the State of New Jersey. And the Constitution of the State of New Jersey. <laughs> and I will bear true faith and allegiance. And I'll bear true faith and allegiance. To the same. To the same. And to the government established in the United States. And to the government established in the United States. And in this state. And in this state. Under the authority of the people. Under the authority of the people. Under <laughs> the authority of the people. So help me God. So help me God. Congratulations. Welcome aboard. <laughs> Hi. 
Thank you. Congratulations. Congratulations. I worry about that a lot. <sighs> Come on, how about the truth? Just for me. That's okay, I can hide. Okay. Re reports. From committees, community <coughs> affairs, Ms. Bailey. Oh, well, thank you, Mayor. Um, we've got a number of them today. today. Um, the chamber report on Bottle Hill Day, which is October 3rd. There will they are hosting an auto show with our police, um, and they will also have a table at Bottle Hill Day where they'll be selling their first annual holiday ornament, um, which will be sold for $20 a piece. There will also be a restaurant week this um, year um, from Sunday, October 11th through Sunday, October 18th. 16 restaurants will be participating. Regular restaurant week uh, is scheduled um, for Sunday, October 18th and Sunday, October through uh, Sunday, October 25th, and seven restaurants will be participating. So they have, I guess they have almost two weeks. They are also sponsoring fire extinguisher inspections on Tuesday, October 20th from 12 p.m. to 4 p.m. That's downtown. Uh, the Chamber, the Madison Arts Cultural Alliance, and the Museum of Early Trades and Crafts will once again sponsor a pumpkin illumination on Friday, October 30th from 5 to 6.15 p.m. The community is encouraged to bring their carved pumpkins down to the museum to display on the lawn. Battery-operated candles will be provided by uh, the Arts uh, Alliance. The pumpkins will be illuminated at 6.15 p.m. The museum will offer a craft inside, and there will be a book reading at short <coughs> stories. Scarecrow decorating. Businesses are encouraged to decorate a scarecrow to be displayed on the lampposts on Waverly and Main from October 20th through November 9th. The Madison Garden Club will be assisting in the setup using ribbon and corn stalks. The chamber has purchased several scarecrows to be used as form. If anyone is interested, they're contacted Chamber Administrative <coughs> Assistant Karen. This is ten dollars for the scarecrow and corn stalks. Fifteen scarecrows have already been reserved. From the Downtown Development um, Commission, uh, they too are looking forward to Bottle Hill Day, which is Saturday, October third, and it's going to be bigger than ever, and it runs from ten a.m to 5 p.m. There will be five stages of all-day entertainment. And um, the Kings Road area will be open until 7 p.m. That's a, a new staging area, and it, that includes the main stage and the beer garden. The final Sidewalk Sounds Saturday concert is scheduled for this coming Saturday, September 26, on Main Street from 3 to 6 p.m. And save the day, the Madison Arts Cultural Alliance DDC Sidewalk Art Gallery Auction Gala is scheduled for Saturday, October 24th at 7 p.m. This gala will be held in Hartley Dodge Memorial, and res residents will have a chance to bid on the artwork at live auctions. <coughs> and there are many beautiful pieces of art, as you know, they're all displayed downtown, so check them out. And look for an insert in utility bills highlighting all the upcoming D DDC and Chamber events. And um, I have, actually, I have a copy of that. Um, this is what it looks like. So this will be in your electric bill insert. And then um, I just wanted to point out that um, the New Jersey Associ Environmental Commissions is got a, a conference Friday, October 9th. Um, from 9 a.m. to 4.30 p.m. at the Raritan Valley Community College in Branchburg, fixing our water woes. And our very own Stephen Stocker, who is a member of our Environmental Commission, will be speaking at this event on Environmental Commissions. So congratulations to Stephen. And um, one other thing to note, uh, Bob Connolly, our mayor, is a member of the Madison Rotary Club, and he has been selected to receive the prestigious Vocational Service Award. Bob will be honored and receive his award of the statewide New Jersey Vocational Service Awards at the 
statewide New Jersey Vocational Service Awards dinner on October 6th. So congratulations, Mayor. Thank you. I, that, no, I have seniors next. Okay. Uh, so senior citizens, um, on Wednesday, September 10th, had Thomas Murphy, uh, an attorney, come and discuss elder <coughs> law matters, including probate, trusts, wills, and, and veteran status. It was really informative. I attended, um, it was well attended by the seniors, and 43 people did attend. And then the Friends of the Madison Senior Center has, is back and in full strength with a full board, and they're going to, they had a fundraiser um, which was announced in the August electric bill, and it has raised um, $1,200, and they're planning um, for Bottle Hill Day and a possible mahjong tournament and a spring joke-a-thon. After waiting for storm repairs to be completed before returning to the Jersey Shore, a full bus of seniors is traveling to Asbury Park on September 15th for lunch, walking on the boardwalk, and shopping at delici delicious orchards on Colts Neck for seasonal produce, produce and other favorites. And I also, um, <coughs> in their Madison primetime, so seniors, um, are navigating the cereal aisle. They have nutritionists, uh, Monica Hansen coming and talking about cereals and um, what's out there and what's good and what's not. And it's Wednesday, September 23rd at 1 p.m. at the Senior Center. And they also are continuing to offer programs of balance and stability. Um, Donna C. Doughton has a new 10 session class beginning Wednesday, September 9th at 1 15. The $50 um, session includes in-depth knowledge about how balance works, the skills to improve balance and stability, exercises to practice at home, and tips to make you feel safer, safer and helpful information to take home with you. Thank you. Thank you very much. Public safety, Mr. Catanel. Thank you, Mr. <laughs> Mayor. On Saturday, October 10th, members of the Madison Fire Department will be participating in the National Stair Climb for Fallen Firefighters. Madison Firefighters will be climbing 2,200 steps or the equivalent of 110 stories of the World Trade Center at City Field in honor of those firemen who died on September 11th. All funds raised go to support the Fire Department of New York Counseling Support Unit and the National Fallen Firefighters Foundation. For more information on the event, and on how to donate to this cause, you can go to the Madison Fire Department's Facebook page. August was a very busy month for the fire department. Uh, they responded to a total of 99 incidents, uh, 23 general alarms, 13 still alarms, 32 investigations, 31 medical calls. Major incidents included um, on August 16th, uh, the fire department along with many other Morris County fire departments and agencies responded the scene of an overturned gasoline tanker on Route 24. Uh, it was a fully loaded tanker with 8,500 gallons of gas, of which about 40% spilled. Um, very dangerous and complex incident, uh, given the volatile nature of gasoline. On Saturday, August 22nd, the Madison Fire Department responded to the apartments at 91 Main Street for an electrical issue. Electrical panel was arcing and sparking from within due to overload electrical circuits. Power of the unit was shut off and repairs were made. On the 28th of August, the fire department was dispatched to a structure fire at 132 Shunpike Road. Second alarm was transmitted for this fire, which brought assistance to the scene from Florham Park, Chatham, Cedar Knolls, Morris Township fire departments. Um, due to the drier than normal conditions in August, the fire department responded to six mulch fires in various locations around town. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Thank you. Utilities, Ms. Vitale. Thank you, Mayor. Um, I'll read the first report from the electric department. Um, they have repaired dam damaged conduits and completely rewired <coughs> the underground electrical feed for the train station post lights. Uh, they completed infra infrared thermal and acoustic emissions testing at Kings Road and James Park uh, substations. They began repairs on Bank 4A tap changer control at James Park substation. The two-year <coughs> contract for line clearance was completed, and they 
as, as usual, they have service upgrades and removals and markout. Um, I know a lot of people are probably interested in uh, the fact that we had probably more outages this year in this heat related uh, time than we did um, about a month ago when it was very hot. But at Labor Day, there was um, Labor Day weekend, there were three outages. Two were caused by squirrels, and one was a heat overload. Uh, last weekend, there was a fault and an unknown cause very close to the James Park substation and the control relays um, to the sub re reacted and opened the 34 uh, kV breakers which feed this, uh, sub, uh, the sub. Um, most of those were taken care of probably within an hour and a half to two hours. Um, and one of those outages um, was only actually about seven houses at, uh, at one point. Um, from the water department, all the, all, the, all the water samples for the state mandated testing uh, have been done. Uh, the lead and copper testing was completed and the results sent to the state. All the lead samples were below the lead action level of 15 parts per billion. 104 requests for locating and marking underground utilities for homeowners, contractors, and other utilities. And um, of course, there's always putting on new meters, curb boxes, outside registers, and uh, shutoffs and disconnection. Uh, Four-inch water main on Treadwell Avenue was damaged by Verizon and had to be ex excavated and repaired. A new water service was installed for the subdivided <coughs> lots on Ridgedale Avenue. An abandoned two-inch water line was removed from place at 21 Central Avenue. A six-inch valve was excavated and replaced at Elmer and Central Avenue. And also, we've had Hatchmont McDonald come in and do uh, an overall review of all of our wells and our treatment plants and our SCADA system. So they'll be working with, um, with Tom DiBiase and getting a lot of that work done. New Jersey American Water inspected and tested the three water interconnections with Madison. We have interconnections uh, with uh, many um, other uh, water companies too. Um, E-Well re redevelopment is still in progress. And I like this last line that Tom wrote. Water restrictions should be enforced due to dry weather. Rem reminder that it is drinking water that you are <coughs> spraying on lawns. <coughs> Thank you, Mayor. Point. Thank you. Finance and Borough Clerk, Mr. Landrigan. Thank you, Mayor. There were no issues with the collection of taxes during the last quarter. The collection rate for the year so far is close to 99%, which is excellent. Mm -hmm. Congratulations to Linda Sawyer, Stacy Dooley, and Sandy Emmerich for receiving the Employee of the Month Award. Due to retirements in the department, they have had to do a significant, a significant amount of extra work in finance and purchasing, and we all appreciate their efforts. Councilwoman Vitali and Act has been working with Acting CFO Jim Burnett and other staff members on upgrades to the utility billing. The boroughs soon have a better online pay portal. As systems will be merged, so your, so your electric and water bill will be under the same account <coughs> on one bill. And finally, the department heads and administration have already started meeting and crafting both the operating and capital budgets for 2016. <coughs> this process will continue for the next three months. Thank you, Mayor. Thank you. Health, Mr. Wolkowitz. Thank you, Mayor. The Morris County <coughs> Mosquito Commission conducts annual surveillance of mosquitoes that may carry the West Nile virus. They advise that it is, this is a common time of year to see an increase in the West Nile virus positive mosquitoes throughout Morris County. Sorry to be bearer of bad tidings, but that's the way it goes. <coughs> the, what you can, uh, West Nile disease, as you may well know, is quite serious. Uh, best case, you get fever, body aches, joint pain, rashes. Worst case, it can turn into meningitis. So it's something to be taken very seriously. The advice of the health department is if you go out when mosquitoes are most active and that's dusk to dawn, it's advised that you wear a long sleeve shirt and long pants. By all means, wear insect repellent when you go outdoors and uh, have screens on your windows and do, <coughs> do not allow standing water to exist on your property. 
Now, those are things you generally hear. One additional one, though, with regard to West Nile virus is report dead birds to the local health department. And the reason for that is that although those mosquitoes infect human beings, it's birds that carry the virus. And the mosquitoes pick it up by attacking the birds. And the bird, it is fatal to birds. So if you do see one, don't pick it up, but do call the health department. The, uh, the other thing I'd like to mention is it's hard to believe given how warm it's been, but flu season is almost upon us. The health department will be offering uh, uh, seasonal inoculations, um, and that will be that will be held at the Madison Civic Center on Wednesday, October 14th, 9 a.m. to 11 a.m. If you are covered by Medicare, please bring your card. Thank you very much. Thank you. And Public Works and Engineering, Mr. Rowe. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Uh, first, an important reminder: uh, at the end of this week, the one day a week garbage will be uh, restarting. Um, number two, the new scoreboards were recently installed at the MRC and they will be operational as of tomorrow. Uh, sewer cleaning is now up to date and the slip lining project that's been going on for the last several weeks is almost done. And leaf bags will be available on October 19th at the Borough Garage for Madison residents. That's as of October 19th. Um, from the engineering department, roads, civilian construction will mill and pave the first phase of the Ridgedale Avenue project between Central Avenue and Oxford Lane starting uh, September 23rd and ending on September 26th. The reconstruction project date has a contractual end date of October 23rd. Announcements about road closings can be found on Rosenet or via Madison Nixle Alerts. Uh, Ridgedale Lab will be the final road improvement project for the year, and we're currently expending over $1 million in general capital on this project. Survey work is taking place on Prospect and Greenwood Avs for next year's capital program, and Adamsville Maintenance Construction are working on the um, Waverly parking lot improvements. They've completed lighting, conduit, and storm sewer work within the lot. The storm sewer outfall connection that goes out to Lincoln Place will take place at night to minimize any impact to the commercial downtown. Uh, the mayor's already provided the update on the library, uh, Ms. Vital on water. So I will move on to Dodge and Memorial Fields. The basketball courts at Dodge Field will have the existing sports lights and stanchions replaced by Musco within the next month and a court resurfacing project is proposed soon thereafter as part of maintenance repairs. And finally, we expect to start the drainage and improvement and natural turf replacement projects at Memorial Field this fall as part of the open space funded park improvements. Yes, thank you very much. Thank you. Communications and petitions. Uh, none received, Mayor. Okay, now this is the first of two invitations for discussion. This one is limited to items on our agenda discussion, which is a New Jersey uh, Transit uh, train service, uh, sending a uh, letter from the governing body to New Jersey Transit, and also resolutions that are on the consent agenda. If you want to comment on the ordinance or anything else, we will, in a few minutes, uh, because we have a uh, fairly short agenda discussion, that opportunity will come up. So uh, mm -hmm. anyone wishing to comment on mm -hmm. the uh, agenda discussion or resolutions, please step forward. Seeing none, we will move on to agenda discussions. And first one is the, or the only one, New Jersey Transit Train Service. Ben? Thank you, Mayor. Uh, for some time now, and I don't think those of you who are commuters to New York need to hear this from me, but for some time now, service on the New Jersey transit line has been deteriorating. This summer, it, uh, it hit a new level on the negative side. And uh, we've heard this from many of our residents. Uh, it's, it's a, I would say, a, a bit of a drumbeat um, in town that if you commute and you're dependent on New Jersey transit, your life is a lot less pleasant as a result. Now, it, there have been over the summer a number of articles in local uh, newspapers pointing out this fact. There have been discussions held on numerous occasions by elected officials together with the, the uh, Secretary of Transportation, <coughs> and the result has always seemed to be an impasse over funding or an impasse over some other part of proposals to cure the problem. So as a result, Councilwoman Bailey and I decided to, that we would draft a letter 
send it to all elected officials, state and federal, who would have any impact over this and who represent us, and also to every town along the New Jersey Transit, I'm sorry, New Jersey uh, Direct Transit Line. I, I should add that the concern here is not only for our residents, albeit that's a, prime, a very important and primary concern, but it's also for the fact that when Midtown Direct started their service, this town and other towns along the line became much more attractive. And even now as we speak to real estate agents, they often tell us that on the short list of things that people bring up in answering the question, how come you're interested in Madison, is the fact that we are on the, on the uh, Midtown Direct line. If that service continues to deteriorate, one of the important reasons for people moving here disappears. And we had very beneficial consequences when Midtown Direct service started. We'd hate to see those reverse. It, it definitely was economically beneficial for our community and uh, to, to be able to offer to prospective residents something other than reasonable service would be a disservice to us. So for that reason, we drafted this letter. Now, as the expression goes, timing is everything. It turns out that yesterday, there was a meeting where the governors of New Jersey and New York met and agreed on a funding proposal that was presented to the Obama administration. Everyone who's commented on it had favorable things to say. It seems realistic. It's potentially viable. So we added words in this letter in support and asked that all of these elected officials get behind any viable solution to the problem. But I'll emphasize that what's going on on the federal level st still does not address the New Jersey transit line itself. It, all of the problems that we've had over the summer and over recent years cannot be attributed only to the joint line with Amtrak, but New Jersey Transit as well has obviously not kept its maintenance up. It's been reported in newspapers that they don't have the necessary backup systems, so what it should be relatively minor glitches cause dramatic interruptions in service. And we have therefore asked in the same letter that a review of the activities and actions of New Jersey Transit being uh, something that's put on the agenda soon. Uh, to get excited about the tunnel, it, that's a good thing. But that in and of itself does not seem to be a total solution to what's been an ongoing problem. Thank you. Comments and thoughts? Bob? I'll just add one thing to what uh, Ben said. Yes, there's a financial issue involved here. All our property values are affected by our ability to get into New York City. I mean, that is the financial hub of this area that supports all our salaries and our property values. But when I heard this past summer that trains were stuck in the tunnel for hours on end and the people were on those trains, that's a safety issue in my book. And when you look at the conditions of those tunnels and how they were affected by Super Storm Sandy, my fear is eventually something is going to happen. And unfortunately, when it happens, it'll be too late. Uh, it's a shame that it's gone so long that remedial action has not been taken, that that tunnel has not been built. When you sit back and think about the number of people who commute into New York City every day, and there's only one track in and one track out, that is on, not only short-sighted, it's a disgrace. And I think something needs to be done and done now. So. I'll let, let it go with that because I'll get myself worked up as I commute on those bloody things every day. <laughs> yes, certainly the, as living in the most populated state in the union, that getting people from point A to point B is so important to our economy. And if we can't do that, uh, not just getting in and out of New York City, but there is a tremendous ripple effect. So we're comfortable with the, uh, the wording of the letter and uh, that going out. Okay. Thank you very much. There are no ordinances for hearing, so now we're on to invitations for discussion on any topic. So if you have uh, something you want to share, please step up to the lectern, state your name, your address, and try to keep your comments to three minutes or less. Petra, please come on up. Right up to, yep.
I'll try to make it brief. My name is Petra, and I'm a resident in Madison. Well over 14 years now. And your, your address? 85 Central Avenue. Thank you. Um, I did not write anything up. I just want to present something to um, come from a personal experience, but I would also like to then those people who might be in a similar location. And if regarding this year's property taxes, um, my under my understand can you hear me? <laughs> my understanding is that um, property taxes were originally uh, the third installment. Correct me if I'm wrong. Were originally due August 1st, and it was then changed to August 31st. Um, I usually come here in person. It's just one of the things I, I like to pay personally <laughs> rather than in the mail. And um, when I was made, made aware of the fact that the county was in the process of making some kind of changes, or, or again, please correct me if I'm saying this wrong, it, it was, in other words, not possible for me to pay the property, property taxes before August 31st. I wanted to do knowing that actually towards the end of August I had planned a very short time away. So um, when it came to that time, so number one is I tried to pay my taxes early and was told it's not possible to do that because the county has set a new date, but they were in the process of making some kind of um, Having said that, so I wrote a check and did send it in the mail because I was going to be out of town. I did not have the opportunity to bring it personally. Um, somehow, I suppose in the mail, it must have arrived after the new deadline, and therefore I got a delinquent notice with an interest on my property tax. It's the principle that I want to talk about, the, the principle of the idea behind this. And now, I could go and just pay this extra money. That's not my point. My point is that I believe that I was wronged, and probably a bunch of other people from this town might feel the same way, um, because it was not very clear or perhaps it should have been acceptable to pay, number one, the property taxes earlier than usual. And if that's not an option, to mm, have a certain leniency so that it's acceptable to have the check a few days later. My check did get cashed. <laughs> <coughs> I have the check number. And so the delinquent notice just went out for whatever reason. And it's the interest, however, that if, if you really think about it, we as Madison are not the only people apparently affected by this, but there may be other people in the county or in the state if this is not only um, a county issue, but maybe a state issue. So there's a certain sum of dollars that is collected for tax reasons, which I find is, is not quite the right way. Okay, So I would like to challenge that with your permission and just um, yes, that's, sure. that's all. <laughs> Th thank you, thank Petra. You. So um, Petra came in earlier uh, and we spoke, and uh, thank you for coming back again to share that because you're, you're, I know you're passionate about uh, the issue. Um, there, there's a couple of things, and I've, um, in conversations um, since we spoke earlier, what the what they should have been able to do in the tax office, and there would have been no reason to do that, is even though the tax bills hadn't taken out, if you had given us a check for what you thought was the amount, they could have put that and had, had a credit on the account. I, if, I it, did have my checkbook I, with yep. me that day, and I could have done that. Right. And, and I'm, yeah, I'm, I'm not saying you, it, it's your, yeah. they, because I, I know I talked to one other resident, and the same thing was told, that they, they would not take anything. So the worst thing you could have been liable for at that point was that if, if your tax bill was higher, you might have had to pay the difference, the interest on the difference instead of the whole amount. 
So th that's one issue, and we will address that so that if this ever happens again, that they will take an estimated payment, and so you can go on vacation not worrying about do, when, when do I send it in, when will, I, when will I get the tax bill? The other thing, and um, I'm looking at our acting CFO, and uh, that we will hold him to the fire, that we will make sure that we do everything possible that's un in our control, and sometimes it's not in our control, but if there's anything under control that will hold up the certification for property taxes at the county level, we need to make sure we do our homework so it's done. If the county holds it up, well, we, that's something else we need to, need, need to deal with. And as far as your particular issue, which you, you, know, you came in here to um, pay your taxes and we didn't take the money and we sent you off, um, there are state regulations, so we can't, I can't tell you right now, we can't all say all in favor, waive the interest because that is regulated by state, but we can, by resolution, make that adjustment. So we will talk between now and the next council meeting and reach out to you and let you know what, the, uh, what we can do for you as far as the interest payment. Thank and you. obviously, you're taking the time to come up here. We may find some other residents that were in the same position. I appreciate that. Yeah. And what I would like to add is, um, really, like I said, I'm not just speaking for myself. I, on behalf of those people who are um, affected by this, um, I really would like to ask that this situation can be looked at, and in retrospect, those people who may have unfairly been charged interest, that that um, gets rectified one way or another. Yep. So we're not talking only about the future and preventing that, but to undo the wrong that has been yes. possibly already done. Yeah, this is obviously extraordinary circumstances that in the next quarter, everyone has their bills. And you know, so there are no excuses, but this time bills were not in hand. So we should so look, take a look at it. So I'm understanding you correctly. You think you can make the adjustment in? We'll, 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 we'll talk. We'll, we'll, we'll have to have the conversation, but it does have to be done by resolution by the council. So we will reach out to you, tell you what the um, the resolution is, and then take care of it. Okay. It's, it's always good to remind uh, residents that you can pay the bill online, and you can find out the amount online. So if uh, someone is away, they're going to be away for an extended period of time. Um, as long as you have your checkbook with you, you can go online. Once the bill is cast, once the county gives us our um, uh, assessed value, equalized assessed value, and we calculate it, it, that dollar amount is online. So that's just something to remind everyone that if you're away, if you have your checkbook with you, it is an option to pay it. Yep. And uh, Petra, I'll give you my card and, and we'll talk uh, tomorrow. Okay. okay. So thank you, Mary. Thank you for thank coming you, in Mary. and um, let the record reflect we had someone come in frustrated with the inability to pay the taxes. <laughs> When we yeah, when wanted case, when, you want, when, when you wanted when you wanted when you wanted to right so that's th thank you so much for bringing that to our attention thank yeah. you thank you anyone else wishing to be step right up hello uh, Sharad Gupta 25 Buckingham Drive. Um, just wanted to talk uh, briefly about the uh, ordinance 49 2015 that's on the docket. So this is for the uh, time restrictions on Burnett Street for parking. So um, this has been an ongoing uh, conversation we've been having with uh, Officer Longo, the Shared Services Committee, Board of Ed, uh, to get student parking off of Burnett Street and moved over to the MRC. Um, at times in the spring, there's uh, upwards of 50 to 60 cars parked on Burnett Street. Um, it's, it's really a safety hazard. There's no sidewalks. Kids are walking in the street. You have rheology traffic. Um, they tend to use the neighborhood as a little raceway afterwards. Um, it, it's just, Burnett's not meant to be a parking lot. Uh, so the obvious solution was MRC, and then to help enforce it, uh, these two-hour parking signs um, I think would seal the deal to uh, get our neighborhood back to being a neighborhood and not a parking lot. Um, so I think everybody's in agreement. We've been to the Shared Services Committee. Board of Ed seems to be on board. Uh, Borough's on board. I think we just need to pass this resolution uh, to finalize everything. That's it. Okay, thank you, Shad. Appreciate you coming in. And yes, the uh, Borough and the Board of Ed have been working together. Tom. Thank you. 
not quite topic, hopefully. Not quite, Tom, but Tom Harlan puts oh, there's a lot on here, but it's all easy stuff. Good, good community, yep. good community project. Tom Harlan put his 27 Palmer Road. So I, I just want to comment also on the the ordinance to uh, limit parking on Burnett, and and I am sensitive to what Sherrod said, and I spoke to you about it, Mayor. Mr. Burnett gave me some of his time. I spoke to Miss Ellis, the school board president, about it, and the chief, and and Officer Longo, and I understand. <coughs> the concern about the driving situation. It, it probably is limited to the time when students approach school around 7.15 and then ends around 7.45, 7.50 when they're supposed to be in the building. And then, and then again comes up, I would assume when school is out for a good half an hour when they're leaving. And, and I can understand how some students could be inconsiderate and they do make the street a little bit smaller, but it's been uh, a place where you've been allowed to park since you were in school and since your children were in school and since Mr. Burnett was in school. So now we're making a big change. And if it's improving the quality of life for everybody, then I'm all for it. And there are a lot of streets in Madison besides just Burnett that are affected by similar situations. I happen to live on one. I know of some situations over by some of the other elementary schools which I've addressed with <coughs> Officer Longo and Mr. Burnett and the school board, but changes really haven't happened as quickly as they should have. And this is another place where it's good that you're making a change, but I think that the alternative that, that the school board's been presented with, which is the MRC parking lot, is, uh, is not very conducive for our students to be safe because it's far away from the campus. I do not understand that the police monitor it with camera, under cam camera surveillance, but there could be situations there that are unsupervised that can happen. So <clears throat> many situations, I gave you some examples, Mayor, and I, I explained them to, to the Chief and to Joe, Officer Longo and to Jim, so I don't have to go over it again, but there's, there's definitely situations that could happen there from kids, from kids being late and not getting a spot on Ridgedale, racing back there to find a parking spot to get back to school, Mr. Burnett said, well, they could race down Burnett and also be, and be late and try to get to school in time. But at least that was their ultimate destination, destination was just to get to Burnett, not to get to Ridgedale to find that they can't park there and now they have to race over the MRC. And it's about a six and a half minute walk if you walk from the MRC parking lot back to the campus to get into the front entrance of the school. So anyway, it, I don't think it's the best alternative and I just hope that the borough and the Board of Ed mm -hmm can collaborate to find a better alternative. There are other options besides putting more parking on the um, Board of Ed property. And, and I understand that they've already added uh, as many as 40 spots, which will alleviate a lot of the pressure. Am I done? Keep on, go, go ahead. Sorry. Sorry everybody? Yes. Oh my gosh. We've had, we've had a, <laughs> actually, tonight's rule is we've had a long break in between meetings, so people are out of practice, so keep on going. <laughs> okay. Well, anyway, I just want you to make sure that, that the council understands that we have to, all, we have to respect the, the safety of the residents that live on that block, for sure, and we also have to be concerned about our students, and they're the borough students and the Board of Ed students. So if we don't find a good alternative, what I think and a lot of parents think is a good alternative, we shouldn't uh, uh, stop the parking until we find that alternative, and I, and I know you're working towards that. Jim and I had this discussion, you and I had this discussion, Mayor, but until you do, right now it's probably not an issue because there's not that many juniors driving yet who will be parking at a Burnett. I would imagine not, not any at all need that. They probably, but they can't park <coughs> on Ridgedale, so I don't know right. exactly where they're going. Are they going to the MRC already? Did they start going to the MRC? Officer, uh, no, Officer no, Longo, yeah. did they start parking at the MRC this week? Did you notice? Is no. the kids using it yet? No, they didn't have to? No. So it's just something to think about. Yeah. I just I'm concerned about their safety. I don't have a I don't have a, a, a student or a child who is using Burnett parking this year. I have a, a daughter who's a ninth grader, so in two years, if she does start driving, then she's gonna have to somehow find the right alternative. But for everybody's safety. <coughs> I don't want that to be the best or the last or the last resort. I, I suggested maybe to use the fenced in area at the uh, the entrance to the MRC that has some issues. And 
maybe the borough and the Board of Ed could share in whatever expense might be required to put some asphalt down or some, some gravel or something to be able to use that for parking and then the, the borough can use that for overflow parking when the MRC is full on the weekends, which, which has been happening. People are parking on the grass now on the road on a busy weekend day. So that might be an alternative that we could share together and then, and then it would be a little bit safer. They know that that's the destination. They get parking spots there. That's where you're going to park and you have to walk three or four minutes to get to the building on a path that's, that's going to be better maintained than this path that you want to go across all the high school athletic fields to the MRC in the dead of winter when it's snowing every other day and we have a, a trouble enough cleaning our own parking lots and our own sidewalks in the borough, let alone that yeah. long path that's going to be probably fifth of a mile long. So, Thank you very much, Todd. So going to pass it anyway? This is the first reading, though. This, this, yeah, this, this is just the first reading, so just a uh, so everyone understands, again, first reading, uh, since this is a Wednesday meeting, we don't have the advertisement time between now and our next meeting, so the uh, second reading will be at the August, August, October 14th meeting, which is another Wednesday meeting due to the uh, Columbus Day holiday, so that'll be the second reading, so the ordinance would not become, uh, wouldn't be passed until then, and then uh, it doesn't become effective until how many days? I've, yeah, but but it has to be advertised. And and but as you know, we're we're having a, a meeting Monday morning to discuss not only the uh, Burnett Road issue but also the uh, issue of Tory J. So we will uh, discuss discuss both of those. And as I look at our president of the uh, Board of Ed, we have uh, you know both shared services and complete streets, and a obvious commitment from this elected body and the Board of Education that, yes, our number one resource is our children and we need to take care of it. So we will do our best. And Thanks, Mayor. Thanks, thank you. Everybody. Good night. Anyone else wishing to be heard? Seeing none, I close this part of the meeting and we move on to introduction of ordinances. Can the clerk please read the statement? Okay, the ordinance schedule for first reading has a hearing date set for Wednesday, October the 14th, 2015 will be published in the Madison Eagle, posted on the bulletin board, and made available to members of the public requesting copies. I call up Ordinance 49-2015 for first reading and ask the clerk to read the set ordinance by title. Ordinance 49-2015, Ordinance of the Borough of Madison amending Chapter 185-32 of the Borough Code to include time limit restrictions for parking on Burnett Road, Canterbury Road, Buckingham Drive, Avon Drive, and Troy Court. Mayor, I move Ordinance 49-2015. Second. Okay, any council discussion? We also have uh, Sergeant Longo to answer any questions, too, if we need, need be. Pat? So, Mr. Harold Lampoutis, I think, reached out to all of us. I actually responded to him, but I just wanted to put on the record the same thing I said to him in my email back, which is as far back as when I was on the Board of Education and we started to look at developing the MRC, I really felt that was the more appropriate place for the overflow parking for Madison. I'd actually prefer to see even to some degree Ridgedale only used as um, part day parking for visitors uh, when their overflow gets filled up. I think having driven up and down Burnett, dropping off kids for over seven years, um, it's not only parking, it's also a drop off location. And in the morning and in the afternoon, it can be a very scary place. Um, last year I noticed the kids were parked down, I think as far as Chateau Terry, and if you're walking from Chateau Terry all the way up Burnett and across the, the fields, you're walking further than you are from the MRC parking lot. I also suspect there are kids that are parking in the neighborhoods because if, if they're parked that far down Burnett, it's, it's problematic. I think of the two choices, I think this is the better one for um, the safety of our kids. I understand it's gonna be a bit of a challenge uh, walking over, but I don't think it's any worse than trying to walk up Burnett in bad weather, there's no, there's no sidewalk there. Um, and it's a steep hill, so it's a, a lot of kids tend to walk in the street. Um, I think the one thing I, and I communicated with some of the Board of Ed members who are on the Shared Services Committee today, we do need to make sure that this fall that pathway gets put in properly. I didn't feel comfortable that there's complete agreement as to how and when that's gonna happen, so I'd ask our administrators to touch base with their administrators to make sure that stays on track, because as I pointed out to them today, we really have until about December 1st to get this in. After that, we won't be able to do anything till the spring. I think the Board of Ed projected that they will have parking for kids probably through maybe January with the extra spots they put in place, but I really don't want to have parents back here in January telling us that their kids don't have a place 
except at the MRC, which is there, there's no decent pathway. So I, I implore both sides to make sure that that happens in a timely fashion. Jim, you cap captured that to do. Thank you. Other comments? Thank you. Rob? I can't imagine uh, kids walking overland in a snowstorm or with uh, snow and ice that's already laying there. Uh, you get a lot of snow. Well, it's, it's, it's far. Even though there are cameras there, a lot of times the cameras don't pick up everything. Um, I, I agree. I think it's a safety issue. Um, I understand the, the issue uh, on Burnett Road as well, but I think the opportunity for unsupervised um, or the the problem for sort of unsupervised uh, transportation to and from the MRC uh, outweighs the current situation. Uh, and I think that um, we need to have another solution. Uh, I, and, and you know, it's just it's it's too far. Uh, it's uh, God know you know it's it's too far in inclement weather. And you know if if you get particularly nasty weathers like we've been having, it, it's a real safety issue. So I, I wouldn't support this in its current form. It's certainly in the um, just I don't know if we made that clear, but in the um, shared services. Uh, meeting the agreement was the borough would be clearing the parking lot and the uh, Board of Education would be clearing the, the walkway. And the walkway is not going to, it obviously goes through between the two fields uh, at the R MRC, it doesn't go across the field, it goes then parallel and right to the parking lot at, um, at, the, at the high school, so they walk up to the parking lot. So that, that would be the plan. So at least that's the, the thought as far as addressing some of those issues. Carmela and then Bob. Um, I, I was at that shared services uh, meeting, and uh, we had lots of conversation about this. Uh, the one thing I uh, kind of proposed at this point was that the uh, Board of Ed um, w was going to get bids on doing a portion of it. Uh, my opinion is let, let's just do it, uh, you know, because we're protecting our children. You know, we, we spend money. We have Cefeli here right now Let, let's just do it and put it in um, but when you talk about cameras I mean there's nothing there's no cameras on Burnett Road that are, are watching the safety of those kids um, listen I, we were lucky enough to live you know a couple of blocks so my kids always walked but um, you know it's getting um, you know it's getting ridiculous over there and I think it's it's um, it's up to us as elected officials to remember who we are protecting to, and we're protect, we're also protecting the residents of that that area, because they just don't bother going out, you know, um, at at certain times, um, and there's problems getting out of their driveways and whatever. So, um, getting back to the shared services uh, committee, you know, uh, we talked about this in great length. And uh, I think that uh, what we came up with, you know, between the two entities was, was a good plan, plus the fact, um, you know, the, uh, uh, the administration at the high school is, is in favor of this. So, um, you know, I, I think we should move forward with it. I mean, this is the introduction right now, and I've listened to anybody else, but um, I, I think that it's an absolute necessity at this point. Either that or... The Board of Education has to say, hey, listen, juniors can't drive anymore. You know, you go to East Hanover, Hanover Park, the kids, the only ones that bring a car are seniors. So, you know, do we want that? You know, so there's, there's al alternatives, and I think that this is a good one. And um, just, again, a reminder that since this introduction, that we'll, we'll have more information between introduction and um, the second reading, assuming it, it, it passes, and that will include an update on the timing of the expansion at the high school on, on site parking, the, uh, any discussion related to that sidewalk that uh, Jim will have a, uh, with the administrators of school district and so on. So we'll have those updates. Bob? I'm not going to belabor the point. Um, a while back, I attended community meetings on Northall Court, and the concern there was the streets are so narrow that you cannot get an emergency vehicle down them safely. 
Burnett Road when cars are parked along the school property, um, aside from the challenge of the residents getting their cars in and out, that's a major thoroughfare for the Florham Park emergency vehicles when they have to respond to that portion of Florham Park that borders Park Avenue. Um, to have cars parked there, children going to and from their cars or residents trying to get out as emergency vehicles are going up and down to me is a significant safety issue. I think it needs to be addressed now and I believe I was at the shared services meeting but it sounds like the MRC parking appears to be the best alternative at this point. Any, ben? Uh, I would just ask that between now and the time we uh, consider this again that w we have our police officials opine on the safety of the MRC parking arrangement as it's been proposed. And uh, we look to official. Yes, but, please. Do you, you want to do it now? Do you want to, if you want to, your uh, share both the safety of the MRC parking, parking of the MRC and and uh, the current challenges at uh, on Burnett, if you want to address both of those. As you know, this is a situation that's been going on for, for a long time. Um, I agree um, that there are better solutions, but I feel the MRC solution at this point is the best. Uh, I would prefer on-site parking at the high school to, to solve these issues, uh, to solve the student parking, uh, and also to solve the concerns of the residents. Uh, but as of this point, uh, I do feel that the MRC solution is the best at, at, at this point. As previously mentioned, um, sometimes vehicles are parked all the way down to Chateau Thierry, uh, which restricts the, the roadway. Uh, and Councilman Landrigan is, is right on point where, you know, sometimes it's, it's difficult to get emergency vehicles down that road. Um, I do frequently see students walking up and down the road in the roadway, which, which concerns me, especially when uh, the road is even further constricted when, uh, when there's snow or, or leaf piles, as you know. Um, so, like I said, this is this is the best solution now. I would prefer on-site parking, but uh, that's not an alternative at this point. Um, for the safety of our children, for the um, convenience of our residents, um, I, I, I support this this um, resolution. I don't know if there's anything you want to add. I mean, the only we thoroughly look at uh, up to the microphone there, please, Jeff. We thoroughly look at the different options. The one thing the school board has done is uh, reconfigured the the parking lot on the tennis court side. Um, there has been Burnett Road parking hasn't uh, been like this for the past 20 years. When I was in high school, there was never cars on Burnett Road. So this is only something in the more recent years after the addition of the new gym and whatnot. So the school board added 35 new spaces. 42 new spaces, which, um, you know, will help us out tremendously getting us to the point mid winter, early spring. The reason why is as juniors and get their licenses, there'll be obviously more cars. I just want to say, like the chief said, the best solution is to put in a new parking lot on the high school property and enough to accommodate uh, faculty, which would be new library where all the faculty could park over there and everyone can park either in the tennis court lot or the gym lot and you don't have to worry about the MRC, you don't have to worry about Ridgeville Avenue, you don't have to worry about Burnett Road. But the perfect solution would be to put a new parking lot in at the high school. I know, you know, the chief brought that up, but that is the uh, right solution. Yeah. And, and, and to reinforce your theme to, for everyone to keep in mind is how things e have evolved. Obviously, the, it's much different when that high school was being built in 1958 that uh, as I look at Bo, it wasn't yesterday that we were there at, um, yeah, it was just a couple of years ago for the record. But uh, the, the high school with three, probably about 300 more students, you know, the, my issue was finding a spot on the bike rack as opposed to a spot to park the car. So we, we are, times have changed and if the high school were built today, we would have said, you've got to have enough parking for the way students get to school. So now we are, adapting a 1958 property to uh, the 2015 standards. And this is what, as you said, seems to be the best solution at the time. Thank you. One other aspect I like is obviously, it was brought up already, is, is the camera system. Uh, we monitor the MRC, it's right at our desk. So if there are students parking there, we, we do monitor that. 
as opposed to Burnett Road where we, we don't have a camera system. Thank you. Added benefits for our students. Thank you. Excellent. With all due respect, though, it doesn't, the camera system doesn't have full, it's not watching the whole lot at the same time, right? I mean, it, the camera's point. Well, our, our, system, our camera's pan. So we, right, we but see. you know, we we've had theft there, and we haven't caught things. So I I understand there's a camera there, but it's like saying, oh yeah, we have a nuclear deterrent. Right? It doesn't really do much good. Um, who precisely is going to to be responsible for clearing the path? Or do you want to wait till the next meeting? I'm happy to wait. Yeah, well, the, the the discussion uh, at a whole yeah, host of questions. Well, actually, we can answer that question. The um, the shared service discussion was since, since the borough is already has some responsibility during the winter time for um, the MRC, the borough would take care of the parking lot. But there, we have the borough has no need for a sidewalk, a cleared sidewalk um, in the winter time. So it is on the board of education that their responsibility to clear that in a timely manner. Um, you and know, do we typically clear that parking lot by seven in the morning. Yeah, saying, we, but we're going to have to. Yeah, it's it's it would be probably given that same priority as a, a, the commuter lots. And keep keep in mind that if it's a major storm, we'll schools closed, and so the the priority shifts. And so as with the excellent communication we have already, we would know at a good enough time that schools closed. Okay, the parking lots a second secondary priority, or schools open that needs to be cleared. All right, roll call vote, and again, more to come. Mr. Catalanello? No. Mr. Landrigan? Yes. Mrs. Vitale? Yes. Ms. Bailey? Yes. Mr. Wolkowitz? Yes. Mr. Rowe? Yes. A hey, consent agenda resolution. Will you clerk, please read the statement. Consent agenda resolutions will be enacted with a single motion. Any resolution requiring expenditure is supported by a certification of availability of funds. Any resolution requiring discussion will be removed from the consent agenda. All resolutions will be reflected in the full in the minutes. Mayor, I move resolution R250 through R273. Do I have a second? A second. Right. Any discussion? Yeah, I'd like to just pull 267 out of a separate conversation. So 267 will be pulled for a separate uh, motion and discussion. Thank you. Anything else? Okay, roll call vote. Mr. Catalanello? Yes. Mr. Landrigan? Yes. Mrs. Vitale? Yes. Ms. Bailey? Yes. Mr. Wolkowitz? Yes. Mr. Rowe? Yes. Hey, can I have a motion for resolution 267? So moved. Second. Council discussion. So um, this is the resolution regarding the adopting of the uh, recommendations of the Strategic Planning Committee. And um, I had fed back to Mr. Wolkowitz uh, a couple of my own recommendations and also some that I received from the chairman of the group, um, Mr. Barbado. Uh, I was happy to see that one of them was included, and that's the addition of uh, looking at the major investor-owned utilities that operate in New Jersey when we do comparison of the rate. The other one was the item eight, which is the timing of when we're looking for recommendations back from the Utility Advisory Committee. Um, we had a discussion about it last Wednesday, and my recollection is that we agreed that the self-generation opportunity was definitely going to probably take that long because of a lot of legal issues that are still in flux. But I thought we had agreed that we could pull back the smart meter and possibly the billing software to an earlier date. Um, I was hoping by the end of this year. I know earlier this year we had a discussion about this, and I thought at one point the administration was actually going to be coming back with a recommendation this fall. I think it's important that, especially for smart meters where we're buying meters all the time, we've got the KRE property coming up. Um, we're continually investing in those that by the time we do the capital budget for 2016, that we have a recommendation from somebody if the if the advisory committee doesn't feel that they can do it in a timely fashion then we get it from the administration and maybe uh, do a cursory review with the advisory committee but i i would like to see that one item in particular pull back to an earlier date so i would um, strongly ask that we modify that one item um, to at least uh, a period of time six months earlier if we're going to approve this uh, Jim, you want to address the, what you see as the timing for the smart meters? And sure. Um, the discussion at the Utility Advisory Committee, 
um, was June 30 uh, for all of them, but there was discussion as to what ones we thought could be done earlier, what, what, what items we thought could be done later. Um, I think and believe that um, the updated billing software, is, as Bob Landrigan mentioned, um, and electronic billing um, will happen um, much sooner. Um, and I believe that at the end of the Utility Advisory Committee, we came to some potential consensus on the smart meters, so I'm hopeful that by the end of the year we'll have um, uh, some, good, uh, some good consensus there to be able to come back to council and say we want to at least start doing this. Um, so uh, I believe that uh, we'll get there. I don't see the need to necessarily change the date, but I can say since I work with the Utility Advisory Committee that we'll work our very best to get those items done as quickly as possible so we can get them on the capital improvement plan for 2016. We can set up an opportunity to overachieve. Well, I, you know, <laughs> I, I made this comment to Ben. You know, if you want to kill something, it's two things you do. Number one, you just farm it out to a committee, and two, you give it a date way over the horizon. Oh. That's <laughs> I've worked in project management for 30 years. Believe me, it's, <laughs> and I, and I, I would just like to set a more aggressive date. I think you know, it's up. It's our. We have to make some decisions about this earlier next year. If we if we really give people until next summer, number one, we'll miss the capital budgeting process for next year. Um, we'll also miss the summer, which one of the things we did discuss is the need to really get some of these meters out there sometime next, early, next, early enough next year that we can actually capture some significant inf information during the course of the summer. You know, the meters we're looking at, I think, one way or the other, are going to capture um, usage in much smaller increments of time so that we can actually start to see how people are consuming energy. Um, you know, one of the biggest exposures we have in this borough is that we rely very heavily on that electricity surplus to fund our capital program and a good chunk of our operating system, our operating budget, rather. And right now, we do not have a good way of matching up uh, the collection of revenue in, um, to match the, the, uh, the cost of the electricity we may be purchasing. Earlier this evening, we were discussing how, you know, with the last couple of years, it's been actually relatively less expensive in the summertime for us to buy above peak um, or at peak times, uh, but that's likely to be reversed in the next several years. So I think we need to get ourselves in a position sooner rather than later so that we can make sure that if we need to be able to match up uh, higher cost of electricity at peak period of times in the summer, we can also charge that way, and we cannot with the current infrastructure. Um, and regardless of you know, which technology we pick, it's going to take us years to be able to roll this out. And, and the way I always look at any type of long-term planning is, like, where do I want to be five years from now or three years from now or whatever period of time? And to me, that should be that we have much more of the way we do the electric um, billing collection, um, billing itself, and also the, the collection of data automated. And, and right now we're doing none of those. And so I think that really is the goal that I'm driven by. And so the sooner we get to a, a recommendation from someone, the sooner we can start to move towards that goal. Because we're not even making any strides towards that until we accept a, uh, from somebody a recommendation. And we've seen, you know, just this year, we, we started the strategic planning process Almost two years ago, I think that was the first time Ben made um, presentations. We, we adopted the committee's uh, all nine, 20 months ago. And, you know, we're now getting to the point where we're accepting recommendations to move forward. So, again, we're, we're, we're putting off making decisions, I think, way too far. And I would just like to see that pull back. Sounds good. Be ben, you were... Uh... Yeah, I, I would only say that I'm sympathetic to the notion that we must move along as quickly as possible. And I modified the resolution to reflect that. Um, I, you know, if, if we can commit people to dates that are, that are sooner than the one we have here, mm -hmm. I'm all for it. But on the other hand, they are, you know, they are volunteers mm -hmm. and uh, they do what they can do, but it, it's hard to hold them to a date that they don't agree with. So I, I unfortunately was not at the meeting mm -hmm. that three of you were at. And uh, I've gotten different reports as to precisely what was decided. I'm willing to go either way. I have the same objective. I think we, we want to move all of these topics along as quickly as possible. And before I come over here, one, one way to think about it is, you know, th this is solidifying planning. And what it does by solidifying it is sending council's message to administration, mm -hmm. the committees, and so on. So. If we have a strong feeling the council's message should be December for the meters, then we should do that. It, you know, the message may come back, you know, they may come back and say it's not physically possible, but, but at least we have gone on the record saying this is a high priority. 
Carmel and then uh, Rob. Yeah, um, I, I just want to say one thing about the Utility Advisory Committee. It's probably made up with some of the finest minds in this town. Um, it, it's a pleasure to serve on, on that particular committee. Um, when we first set up the ordinance for this, this committee, there were supposed to be uh, meetings on a quarterly basis, and that was all, okay? Um, they have agreed to meet every single month now until we get some of this resolved. Um, some of it um, that, you know, some of the recommendations that have come from uh, the Strategic Planning Committee um, are already being worked on, you know, as far as administration and, and the people who are working um, in, in the particular departments. Uh, one of the things that we're very interested in doing and we've been moving forward are handheld, um, which is getting rid of the books that are currently um, penciled in with a number two, and uh, which goes back to uh, the Stone Age someplace. But uh, Mike has been working on handhelds. And there's also the second portion of that Along with the handhelds, we have the ability to buy some of um, the, um, the AMRs that could possibly be put out there. So we're making that decision. So we are, we're working very, very um, closely with getting that done to put pressure on people, you know, by, you know, in, in 16, what, what was the original, 90 days? It, it was, it no, was the end of this was, year. The original right. was March yeah. of uh, okay. 2016. I mean, we're, we're asking for just another 30 days or, or whatever. Um, out of consideration for this particular committee, um, they ask great questions. They understand what could happen. They're in the industries that work on this on a, on, on, on a daily basis. And um, I think we should be listening to what they have to say. Um, we will work very diligently, um, you know, until the end of this year. And then it's going to be somebody else's uh, problem, I guess, after January. But um, we will work every single month. At, you know, uh, our next meeting is October the 7th. I invite anybody to come and, and listen to uh, the accomplishments of this particular committee. So, um, I, you know, out of consideration, out of consideration for these people um, who do a lot of traveling um, and make a great effort to show up at, at all of these meetings, um, you know, uh, I, we had extended, um, you know, the, this thought to Ben just to give us just a little bit more time. I mean, uh, I, it'll get done. It'll get done. But we have a lot to listen to. I mean, Kurt Wilson is still working on, on um, the, you know, the, the, he's the consultant that's working with, um, uh, with Mike right now. His, we don't have all of, all of his report yet. So, um, you, know, you know, we just have to like, chill out a little bit and we'll get it done because we're working with good people. Rob, you had your thanks. So, um, no. <laughs> was so. I, I just learned today that maybe um, the members of the strategic planning committee did they have a did they have the same amount of uh, the same amount of time to review the resolution as the other groups did? It was the exact same. Well, no, it wasn't exactly the same because, as you may recall, he, yeah. when we had the budget committee review, mm -hmm. that went on much longer than I believe it should have. It went on for approximately six months. And there were many iterations. So the committee had many opportunities to review it. At the end of the day, um, they, got, they ended up with a document that they were more or less OK with. But I think you heard some would have liked a little more, a little yeah. less. But they had opportunity for input. In this particular yeah, this, case, was it a little I, different or something? This sorry, time? was it a little different this time? I, again, I'm, I'm coming. Uh, yeah. Thank goodness. Right. Uh, we we only have met. Well, we had two presentations on it, and then we had one discussion of the uh, of the resolution itself, 
in, in, a, in a member. Committee, not all the members of the committee saw it through no fault of mine. Because no, I'm, I, I, no, I'm, I'm just explaining. Excuse so so the, the period of time that was it was available were shorter because the discussion has been shorter. And I think that's appropriate. My own view is that we went on much too long on the budget guidelines, but that's history. We're, we're getting better as we're I going along. So. I mean, does, does it make sense to wait 12 days to the next meeting to ask the members of the committee if they have any final input on this resolution? Well, I, I received comments from a member of the committee, and um, we can discuss the comments if you want, but I felt that they were not appropriate to this resolution. And by sponsoring the resolution, I think I have some authority and standing to say that. Yeah, it, it, as I, I got to see so, it. I, so, so then the, the, the people who are on the committee, with respect to the stand, to the to the proposal of the re resolution, should be not not given a chance to look at the resolution. They were given. Yeah, a chance. yeah, I, yeah I, I think ju just just to they, for, were for, they were they were given a chance when it was first introduced. I modified it subject to comments I got, including from a member of the committee, and um, I have. I come back with a modified document that I believe reflects comments to the best that we can, taking into account the fact that we have professionals in our electric utility and we have issues to address outside of the committee. We did the same with the budgeting process. There's no different treatment with regard to the input from the committee and how it's reflected in the resolution. I would hold them each up to the same standard. I think we, we have, um, I, I did see a copy of the, um, the suggestions and three of them I would call getting too much in, uh, this is a formalizing planning and you don't want to get too specific with that sort of thing. And so three of them are appropriate to keep track of, but not in a solidifying a, a planning resolution. Uh, as Ben mentioned, several were uh, incorporated and that we've just discussed one of the key things which is a, a, a deadline date so mm -hmm. right now we have a motion on the floor and we have um, several options one is to withdraw the motion and make a new motion with the change in the date if we um, want to do that number two is vote on it as it stands um, and number three is gets withdrawn we come back in um, at the next meeting. My personal feeling is I, I don't like number three. I that would go with. Can I just make one remark? In the last paragraph of this resolution, it talks about the Utility Advisory Committee taking the responsibility of fulfilling those particular things from the st strategic planning. So you're going to wait another month, you know, to get this going, and uh, then, you know, come on. Here right. we are. It's May again. Well, I, actually, you know, I, I suggest so we waited 12 days, not a month. So well, I have, I have so this. I, I have just days just and 12 days. Give the members of the strategic days, planning committee the chance to review. They did. Well, first of all, the, as I under, a couple of okay, comments. Uh, let's, let's, as, let's, as I understand it, the committee, although I encouraged it. Uh, let's let's, let's uh, we, we don't want to have side conversations. The committee, Sorry. although I, I encouraged it, did not review it because I asked some members of the committee if indeed they had seen it and the answer was no, even though I had distributed it in a way that I thought would eventually get there. I did not want to usurp the responsibility of people who had the responsibility to distribute it. Um, I find it interesting that Pat mentions that we've been going on a long time in this process since, um, with all due respects, he was responsible for taking as long as it did to get the budget part done. I would like to move this forward. It is a resolution. And like all resolutions, it is subject to change. I think we ought to roll it out, see how it plays. And if indeed there are things wrong with it or things were omitted that should have been included, we'll have that opportunity to do it. It can happen at any time. It is a resolution. 
So I would encourage us to vote on it. Now, the issue of dates is, as I said, is an issue that I'm, you know, I, I can only say I wish I were at the meeting because I'm, I was trying to reflect what I was told was the agreement at the time. And those are the people we are asking to implement it. And I'm sympathetic to what uh, Carmela said. I mean, these people are volunteers. What are we, you know, what are we going to say to them? Thanks for your effort, but you're fired because you came in late. I mean, I, we can't do that. And, and we're looking for them to give us their input. I, I'm, you know, all else equal, I wrote March 31st. I'd like to stay to March 31st. But I don't think the world falls apart if we, if we extend th uh, three months so they get it done. The 12-day part, I have another committee coming in next meeting to present their material. I don't want to bump them. I just see this you know, happening all over again. I don't know why strategic planning has ended up being such a contentious issue with this council that, that every time we come to the council, with a resolution, not an ordinance, with a resolution that can be changed, it becomes the subject of a, a protracted conversation. Yeah, I it, don't get it. Yeah, and I don't think con contentious is the uh, right yeah, thing, because I, I think it's been spirited, and I think we, we've, we've worked together to, to make a, a stronger product. And so let, let's, not, uh, let's not discuss verbs and how, how that was stated. Let's stick with the, the state of the, re the resolution right now. So. So I guess I'll talk to Ben later about why he felt I delayed the budget process. But um, just to clarify, because only some people were aware of this, um, I had reached out to Martin Barbado yesterday. When I, I actually did not realize, and I apologize for this, that the resolution was actually tucked in our packet. I took a quick look at part of it on Friday. And finally, on Tuesday morning, I realized that it was in there. I went through it. I gave Ben my feedback last night. I asked Martin, because I happened to be talking to him, if he had seen it. He said no. So I gave it to him, and I said, you know, I know you had some comments the previous time. He fed them back through me, unfortunately, and I gave them to Ben. Um, hmm. Those are the ones that the mayor's referring to it because I copied him on this as well. I didn't want to copy everybody. I felt I needed to copy the key people involved. Um, and in the end, his two comments are about, two of, the, two of the main ones are about, he really wanted to see his mission statement or their mission statement, very, got very personal, I think, um, in there. And also, he also wanted to make sure that um, there was something in terms of developing guidelines and methodologies on determining the net benefit of the surpluses generated from the utilities. I'm not certain that that's really down in the weeds. I think that is a council issue. Um, but he was not able to be here tonight, so I just thought I'd represent that and make sure everybody understood where all this was coming from. Um, I am, have been pushing to try to move this along. I do think, though, that we are setting goals for a significant period of time for uh, both ourselves and also for the staff, so I think it's important that we get it right. Um, ultimately, I would prefer, if, even if we brought this back to March, because although I do agree we don't want to push the, 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 um, the volunteers, I also think we don't want to have them working on this for nine months. I think, I think even they will start to realize that they don't need that much time to really take a look at this. Um, but, it, you know, that's, that's a council decision. I, ultimately, I will vote for this because I feel um, there's significant things here that we need to get moving on. Um, and that's the one thing I would still ask people to consider, but I'm not sure how we move forward with that. So, so here's, before I go to yeah. you, Carmel, I just want to, I, I, I wait, did you, I actually, I just, just want to, one, one thing before I go to you is, um, what I would like to see happen here in this, uh, whether this will address your concern, is withdraw as it is, uh, mo move it with a March 31st on the smart meters, because I, I agree with that we, we need to move sooner as opposed to later, and I would like to see with due respect to the uh, volunteers, maybe the December 31st is not, um, is putting too much pressure, but we need to do it, March 31st is even pushing it into the, the capital planning. So the, it's, the sooner the better. So that is my thought. So Carmela and then. Yeah, yeah I, I just want to make one point. When we start talking about AM, AMRs, we've been talking about them three years, four years, I don't know. We've been putting money aside for something like this. So, uh, yeah. So, mm -hmm. I, you you want to know something at this point? If you want March 31st on it, we'll get it done. I mean, it doesn't matter. It doesn't matter to me. You know, um, 
you know, I'll go back on October 7th, and they said, guess what? While the administration and all of the uh, employees are working on some other items, you know, like the handhelds and whatever, we will work on, on the AMRs and, and bring something uh, to fruition. But that's fine. Change it to March 31st. I, that's all I wanted I, to say. You okay. Have a problem? I'm only bringing back as liaison to that committee what the committee said. Yep. You know, and out of respect for them, you know, we asked for that little bit more time. I, but I, you know yeah. what? But, I, I have but, great, I have a lot of faith in people. As I said, we, we, so we we'll want to, this, it sounds, I think there is there is some disagreement, but I think the one agreement we do have this council is the priority on this. And so the message is this is a priority. Yeah. So uh, who, who made the motion that you made the? So I'll move that we modify the current uh, motion by mo uh, changing the date on item eight first bullet smart meters from June 30th until, from June 30th, 2016 to March 31st, 2016. The other two remain the same. But, so that is on first bullet only, the other two remain with the other. Uh, let, let, let me have a second before you can. Uh... All right, I'll second it. Okay, Ben. Yeah, I just want the record to read that the initial date there was March 31st. So we're just going back to the initial date that was in the draft. Right, so, yep. And I'll be there so you can offer me up to throw things okay. out. Oh, really? <laughs> okay. No, I'll remember that. And I will do whatever it takes to make that date. So, all right, take that to the bank too. Jim, it's for the record, the self-generation is going to be the hardest one of the three yes. to get done. Yeah, I, I totally and agree. That and and just so everyone knows that. Yeah. That's the hardest. Two out of three ain't bad. Ain't bad, as, as Meatloaf would say. <laughs> <laughs> all right, uh, roll call vote, please. Mr. Catalanello. Yes. Do we know what we're voting on? Do you want to restate the? He doesn't know what he's stating. So it is the we original. It, it, it's the, original uh, resolution with a March 31st on yes. bullet one on eight. Yeah, really. That's clear. Sure. Okay. Thank you. Mr. Cavanaugh. Yes. yes. Okay. Good. Mr. Landrigan. Oh God, yes. Mrs. Vitali. Oh, yes, please. Yeah. Bailey. Yes. Mr. Wolkowitz. I am pleased to say yes. Mr. Rowe. Victory is mine. Yes. <laughs> okay. Uh, Not really. That's let's move on to, uh, there's no unfinished business, That's approval of vouchers. Okay. And keep in mind, everyone, this represents three meetings worth. Public safety is $124,329.78. Health and public assistance, $11,483.45. Public works and engineering, $497,280.47. Community Affairs, $19,917.81. Finance and Borough Clerk, $4,148,383.40. Utilities, $1,391,841.57. Total is $6,193,236.48. May I move the vouchers? Second. Second. Discussion? Roll call vote. Mr. Calanello? Yes. Mr. Landrigan? Yes. Mrs. Vitali? Yes. Ms. Bailey? Yes. Mr. Wolkowitz? Yes. Mr. Rowe? Yes. And I'd like to make the, under new business, the following appointments, requesting council confirmation for the Zoning Board of Adjustment, Helen Kerr for alternate member number one of the unexpired term of um, <coughs> Carl Hess. This is through December 31st, 2015. And for um, Mary Sue Salco, alternate member number two for the unexpired term of care, who moved into the other slot through December 31st, 2016. So moved. Second. Discussion? Roll call vote. Mr. Calanello? Yes. Mr. Landrigan? Yes. Mrs. Vitali? Yes. Ms. Bailey? Yes. Mr. Wolkowitz? Yes. Mr. Rowe? Yes. And with that, I move that we adjourn for the evening. Good. Thank you, everyone. We're back in the saddle again. We had, I would say, three months of additional to address things you brought up. And at the end of the day, the subject was. Uh, if Ray was here, Jeannie, right now, he said, you're eloquent as usual.